What's up guys? Jordan from Bennett's Customs. Once again, we are back on the race car. Um, as you saw in our previous episode, we got the hood laid out, um, the rear section, the kind of head blister, bubble, whatever you'd call it. Uh, tried to replicate those lines similar to the front grille, you know, try and tie it all together. Uh, yeah, we got lots done, which is great. It's actually starting to look like a car. It's nice to kind of have it off the wood blocks um, for now, just to, you know, get the layout. But on uh, this episode, just gonna try and tick more boxes um, right away. First off this morning, I'm gonna pull the body off and I'm gonna build those little subframe um, connectors, I suppose you'd call them, to hold the body to the frame. Uh, I'm going to do the kick up right over and around. We're going to space those rivets out a little bit better. Um, and then I may even tie in a couple pieces across just to keep everything rigid before we pop the body back on. Once that's done and the body is actually fixed, um, you know, temporarily to the frame, I'm going to start to build this structure that goes around here. Um, not exactly sure what I'm going to use yet, but I have some material. So once we get to that point, I'll kind of hold a few items up and, and see what's going to work. Basically, I want to try and finish that off. I'm going to fill this little hole up, get rid of that. Um, maybe actually just do a full pass on it, blend everything in um, and just get a bit of the body work done. I'm going to try and get a bit of the, the you know, the, the lack of structure there is. I want to put some structure in it. I'm going to have to fabricate up two hoops and try and kind of build them with inside the cowl to hold the cowl steering. Um, it needs something to attach to and it's just, you know, basically floating there at the moment. So we're going to pull this off, get everything set, put the body back on, square it up exactly where we want it. Um, and then we'll start to try and tick more of the, more of that long list off. So let's get into it.
we got our new piece laid out. It's got a really nice radius, kind of matches this. And then I've set it about five mil on the inside, just so when it comes down, meets the flat surface and then has a nice little lip when it comes off the frame. And then so right now, because my bender can only do 1200, I've had to split these. They're about 1600 long. So I'm gonna have this piece and then it's gonna fin or fix, I'll weld this one to it. I'll let that make it seamless so you don't see it. And right now I'm gonna start this kick up. So I literally have to shrink this area and then stretch this area. And then on top here, you can see this line, that's where it tapers. So I'm gonna shrink the inside of this. So there's a little bit of work to do. You got the shrinker, got the tire on it so it doesn't shake around too much. And I'm just trying to set it and kind of played around with it a lot. But the, um, the shrinking part of it, I don't know if it's just this shrinker, but it's pretty, it's very aggressive. Um, as you can see, this is a kind of a shit piece as an example, but sometimes it it tucks quite a bit, like almost wants to like roll the edge. So I've just been playing around with it, trying to adjust it a little bit better. Seems to be working. So we're just gonna um, get straight into it. with the trinker and stretcher and that old hammer right over there, we were able to create one piece. So that's where it kind of bows off and then it's got the little dog leg all the way down, which is really nice. So basically this piece is going to go, if I can get it into place here and show you that, is what it's gonna look like. And then I'll just round off this edge and it really should look the part. done welded got lots of sh cool wild shape to it 
and fits. So they're both on, just sitting there, but you kind of get the idea of what I was trying to achieve. And then what I'll do is I'll describe a center straight through here, drill every 50 or 60 mil, I'll just measure it out, see what looks best. Um, and then the body will literally sit down straight onto it. So definitely looks the part. And you know, it obviously fixes the, the body to the frame nicely. So let's scribe some lines and drill some holes. So as you can see, I've scribed a line using some old calipers. They still have a nice sharp edge on them and that's kind of just how I scribe all my lines. Um, these aren't the ones I usually use to measure stuff, but I've got that down and then what I've done is I've chosen every 50 mil and what I'm doing is going in 15 mil to match that. And then I'll just scribe, scribe, scribe all the way down center punch and then I'll cut them and then this is ultimately what it's going to look like and then that kicks right up over the frame rail so I may put a nice little piece kind of similar to what I had before just to finish it off um, but for now I just wanted to get those laid out and then I'll do the other side and then we'll get the body on and fitted finished up so you can see they travel down kick up and then they kind of taper in on the inside so they turned out all right but I'm um, gonna stick them on now and fit the body First fitment, looks pretty dang good. I just need two in the back here. Just shrink this area a little bit. See how it's just a little bit off. Same with this side. But other than that, that's a really schmick looking 
subframe mount body to frame mount frame body mount sub got the bottom all clicked in kind of see it looks pretty cool and then it kind of tapers straight off the frame and then what I'll do is I'll probably just round off this edge and then maybe do something up here I was almost even thinking about bringing this piece up and adding a couple more rivets down here but you can overdo it easily, so I don't want to do that. So I might just actually leave it. That'll be it. I was gonna kind of make that little accent piece here, but I reckon it'll just be fine. Just finish it off, but these are all ready. So virtually what will have to happen now is I'll just remove the paint that's along the back there. I need to weld and finish this area where a weld comes in as well as down here I need to finish that before I can put this on um, but basically these are all ready to be removed drilled and put a rivet through then I'll weld the rivet from the back side and I'll move on to the next one and so on all the way across so it um yeah lots to do Looking pretty good. I just finished planishing the whole weld all the way down and it looks pretty damn good. It's funny like using this obviously with the slapper and dolly and that it, it comes out really nice. I mean you could go so much more with it and get this full you know nearly seamless but there's really no point because I'm just gonna, a little bit of filler, high build, paint, it's gonna be totally fine. But as you can see, if you look down the edge of it, there is no distortion at all. Like it's, it is really, really nice. I'm, I'm super happy with the way it's turned out. And there's no oil canning at all in the panel. Everything's really tight. Um, yeah, it's starting to really look nice. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna pull this off. I'm gonna weld the bottom of this seam where, where it goes down here, as well as right here. Um, once that's done, then I'll clean it up, reinstall it, 
and then I will start to fit some rivets on this side. And then once this side's finished, I'll kind of move on to the other side and I'll do the same, fully weld it, planish everything, weld this, and just get it all solid. So um, yeah, super happy with how it's coming out. Looks pretty damn cool. Got a little bit of work to do on this rear panel, but that's okay. I'll just um, hammer and dolly as much as I can. Might even just use, um, yeah, the shrinking disc in a few areas. But other than that, it looks awesome. subframe piece I, I'm just gonna call it a subframe tell me tell me if I'm wrong but it's just easier to call it that but yeah you can see it looks really good I'm super stoked with the way it's turned out so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pre-drill and try and fit the rivets all the way along and then I'm gonna remove it and deburr all the inside of the holes make sure there's no um, you know, drill bit shavings or, or yeah, metal shavings down between these seams. And then I'm gonna etch prime between this panel and this, and then I'll weld everything. Cause I wanna make sure that this is all sealed prior to doing anything. So, because once that piece is on, it's not coming off. So let's remove drill and insert some rivets and then we'll remove the whole panel. We'll just deburr everything, make sure it's all clean. We'll just give it a quick paint and then we'll um, install it. Bit of a mess, but they're all done. They're all deburred on both sides. Everything's nice and clean on this side and on the back side as well. So this should fit up really nice and tight. So what I'm gonna do now is just clean this quickly, um, clean the bottom edge of this, and then I am just gonna put some edge prime along the bottom and edge prime on the inside of this as well, just to seal it. So let's try that now.
Okay, she's painted. Just sealed. Just ran the heat gun along it. Just to speed up the process. You know, million different ways you could do this. This probably isn't even the best way to do it. Usually I, I would use like a really nice weld through primer or something like that, but honestly, I think it'll do the trick. I'll just let this dry for another five minutes. I'm gonna clean up these rivets and then um, we'll get this back down on the body before I weld anything in. I want it to be fixed down on the frame so we know we're welding them in the right spot. So what I'm doing here is um, clamping everything so everything's tight um, and then I'm tapping in with this brass ended hammer. Um, I'm tapping each one in so they're nice and flush and then on the back side I'm just MIG welding them. Um, nothing special, could use silicon bronze on the TIG, could just use standard MIG wire and, and take them from the back as well but honestly this is... I don't know if you can quite see, but they're just tapped. They're very long, so what I'll do is I'll cut them off when I'm done. But I don't necessarily care about what they look like inside as long as they're tacked and everything's tight. So um, I will do you know, a couple tacks all the way around, uh, making sure I kind of keep the heat around because uh, everything kind of will want to move just a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to work my way around and, and um, tack all these in and hopefully it'll look pretty cool. Looks good. Super stoked with how this turned out. Just comes right up, kicks up over, and then kind of does that little transition. Really happy with the way the, the quarters kind of lined up. I was considering maybe doing a blister kind of where your elbow would be. Maybe some sort of kind of shape. I don't know. Maybe that's silly, but. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. But anyways, it's in. All those rivets are welded in. I'll just take you to the back. I really like this part. Kicks in. Nice little radius. And just really looks the part. 
I think. Not too many, you know, like I know we have this one there, like it almost would have been better if I didn't have them, but I'll, I'll live with it. Just, you know, a few little subtle touches. Super happy with the spacing going from 50 mil, not 30 mil. You know, just not too many, but enough to, to um, you know, secure the body and obviously kind of make it look quite nice, but it looks awesome. And then, so the inside, obviously, I haven't finished yet, but as you can see, they're just welded. I didn't, you know, I thought about like literally heating them up with the torch and and um, properly pressing them as, you know, I, I usually do that with, with frame stuff, but it doesn't matter. I'll trim these all nice and flush, real close, um, and just bevel the edges, make sure, you know, I'm not gonna catch them and you won't even see it once the inside's upholstered anyway, so. And it's tight. Nothing's going anywhere. So if you can imagine, there it is. I love this angle. I almost like it better than looking at the front. I just love that. And now with the added rivets, looks great. Super happy. Next day, next side, almost done. Sort of, 50%. Um, so now we're gonna work on this side. I've just got this tacked in, a um, few tight tacks. So we'll do so on the, ba um, the back side as well. And then I'll make one full pass on the whole thing. Um, and then I will fit it back onto the car and just kind of clamp it into place. And then I'll start to um, hammer and dolly and get it fixed. I just want it to kind of sit where it's naturally gonna sit. Um, in the car and then I'll be able to hammer all this out similar to the other side. Um, so I'm going to weld this all up now and then uh, we'll get it back on the frame. it in and you can see the shrinkage there is a huge dip right here and another one right here but that's okay because we still have to hammer and dolly this I mean that is let me put a ruler on it fair bit of shrinkage all along there Especially when you get into a corner. I hate corners. I usually try and radius them like I did here. Um, you know, just, well, I should have radius that as well, but that's okay. And then on the other side was very much the same. And it's really nice. I mean, it does have contour in it this way, so, but. It's really nice. And as well as the back is good. So patience, that's what you need, especially even in there. Huge dip right there, but that's okay. 
we will make sure that we get this nice and straight as we did the other side using the hammer and dolly and the planishing hammer and the slapper and everything else. I'm sure a lot of you guys use this trick. This hose is a little bit big for this drill bit, but you know, it's nice if one slides on there, but it's really nice to have this on when you're drilling so that when you do have pressure on and you pass through, the, the rubber actually hits and it'll just, it doesn't damage any of your steel. So if you don't want, you know, the end of the drill to damage anything or kind of dent it, try using one of these, works really well. All right, that's a wrap. Super happy with the way this, this has turned out. It was definitely a fair amount of work, but you know, it's really starting to take shape. It was super tough to just kind of like hold the rear fenders up and you know, envision it, but I could see it working. I just really like the, the kind of simplicity and also, you know, it does add a fair bit to this car, having these, the lower portion with those rivets on there. So I will carry these out into the front for the, the um, front grill, but that's basically it. And then the rest of it's just gonna try and keep it very subtle and, and um, understated. So super happy. I'm like, man, Carl's planishing hammer made just like life so much easier welding all this up. But wow, just, yeah. And like even the distortion, there's, there's just nothing there anymore. So I'm really excited to get this thing into primer just so we can see it as one piece with all the lines, which would be really cool. So super happy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Um, you know, on the next one, we'll be just taking off more of the list. So we'll, uh, yeah, start to get lots done. Also just wanted to do a shout out uh, to two really good mates of mine um, from back home in Canada, Craig Ross and Dave Love. They are currently or just arriving into Bonneville right now for Speed Week um, and they are racing their new car. So it's a 29 Ford Roadster, um, full equipped, ready to go at Bonneville. So if you guys see them down there, it's blue, like a Washington blue color. Um, but yeah, if you guys see them, make sure you go and say hi to them. They're extremely nice guys and um, yeah, they enjoy having a nice chat. So I wish you guys all the best. Hopefully you do well. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Hit that notifications button. Thank you again for all the support and positive comments. I know I say it all the time, but seriously, it is just, yeah, it's incredible. Just the feedback. It just makes every single video that much more exciting to do. So yeah, see you guys on the next one.